I hope this video finds you well. Rich Kravchik with Cobblestone Asset Management. And I want to take this opportunity to share a bit about a tactical move that we just made in our portfolios. I'm going to show you the chart and I'm going to explain the setup of why we like this particular opportunity with the market. Before I do that, let me just acknowledge we're moving into the fall here in the U.S. As we look at September statements, whether you're a client of ours or you self-manage or have money managed elsewhere, the reality is you're probably looking at some fairly unpleasant September statements. Stocks have been beaten up pretty bad year to date. Bonds have as well. So, you know, regardless of the portfolio split you may have between stocks and bonds, you're probably seeing some, some lower values on your September statements. Even in the midst of this volatility, we find opportunities. So let's take a look at the chart and I want to explain this one to you. Let me begin by setting up this chart and I'll explain what we've done recently and what we saw at the time we opted to make this tactical move. So this is the S&P 500 and we're looking at it from January 1st of 22 through September 27th of 22. That's the date we made this tactical trade. On that date, we intentionally increased our market exposure across all of our client models to capitalize on what we believe is an opportunity that shows itself in these charts. So the red line is the 200-day simple moving average. The blue line is the 50-day simple moving average. And when you look at these, think of it very similarly to how a meteorologist would forecast the path of a hurricane. They're going to say, here's the cone of where we think it's headed. And to do that, they're looking at low pressure areas and high pressure areas, trying to figure out where that storm may be pushed. In our case here, the moving averages push on the stock market. If they act as pressure, support, and resistance points. So you can see, coming out of those June market lows, the market rallied. It went up through the 50-day moving average, and it went right up to the 200-day. It then pulled back through the 50, and we now find ourselves considerably lower, uh, at least as of late September, that's where we were. I want to add one more piece here because it's an important piece of information that we use to make decisions, and that's RSI. Above the S&P chart, you'll see a line that indicates relative strength index. When we get a reading of 70, it indicates overbought. When there's a reading of 30, it indicates oversold. So going back to the mid-August highs, if you follow that line directly up from the that spot where it's touching the 200-day moving average, you'll see that RSI was also showing the market was a bit overbought. You could say it was being too optimistic. It then paired some of those gains and moved lower. Now you flash forward to September 27th, and the S&P is at 36.47. RSI is below 30. You can see that reading of 26.86. So it's indicating the market is being perhaps a bit too fearful. It's showing us oversold conditions. The gap between that 36.47 and the next piece of atmospheric pressure or resistance is 36.47 to 40.30. So that represents 10.5%, which 383 points of movement. The 200-day is 581 points higher than current levels, and that's 15.9% above the current level of the S&P. So what we'll look to do here is see does this bottom around 3640, 3700, does that hold? And if it does, are we able to see the market move up towards those moving averages? If we approach the 50 day, we're going to look to RSI to see could this be running out of steam? Is the market looking overbought at that point? Or does it have more room to run? We'll make a decision at that time trying to decide do we hold on to see if we can get back up to that red line, the 200 day moving average. So now that I've shown you this tool, I want you to understand that we use technical analysis exactly as that, a tool. We pull it out of our pocket when we like the opportunity and we like the way the chart's set up. In the backdrop behind this, we're still running our fundamental portfolio process. Company earnings remain important. Economic factors remain critical to our portfolio process. But we use this to look at opportunistic entry and exit points, particularly during times of market volatility. I hope it's been useful for you to just see the perspective, see what we've seen, and understand that even in bumpy and volatile markets, there are opportunities.